Absolutely. I mean, that's that's one of the thing I, things I see in Scorsese's work process, and that's why I feel like he's gotten so many good performances from actors across the board in, in his films in the past is because of his acute attention to detail. But not only that, he has a way of respecting the characters that he puts up on screen as much as he expect, uh, respects the plot line. You know, oftentimes in films, the characters sort of get sacrificed to move the story along and to have the action continue or to have people engaged in the story. And I feel like he has, I feel like he has this intense respect for the characters that he puts up on screen, no matter how insidious they are or horrible they are. He wants to flesh these characters out and, and you know, for example, in, in films that I've seen in the past, for you could look at Goodfellas and ask why there's a scene of, you know, mobsters in jail slicing garlic paper thin. I mean, what does it have to do with the ultimate plot line? But it gets you more engaged in these people's lives and it makes these characters more genuine, you know, and that's, that's he takes chances like that. And that's what I love about his work. I agree. How, how much does uh, Billy's uh, past determines who he is within the present? Well, I keep saying this about the, the two characters in this film. I feel like they're a conglomerate of one character almost, or one man, or the duality of man. And these are guys that come from similar backgrounds, that have the same opportunities growing up in the same areas in Boston, come from a small town. But they had early influences in their life. And uh, Matt Damon's character's influence was the, uh, you know, Lucifer himself and Jack Nicholson's Costello. And, uh, my, my influence was watching what happened to my father and my uncle as a result of uh, affiliations with the, with, the, uh, with the mob. And so therefore we made specific choices, moral choices early in our life that steered the course of our destiny. Ultimately, both these characters in this film end up kind of doomed without giving away the ending. But uh, it's about moral choices that we make as human beings early on in our life. And, and, and what's the result of that? Who do we become? What kind of men do we become? And they're two sides of the same coin, these characters, you know? Uh, and that's what I found really interesting about this, this, this movie was almost like walking on set and making two different films, you know? Two sides of the same man. Uh, considering that the, the, considering that the Hong Kong film industry is is very creative and and they produce a lot of movies, what do you think is their influence in Hollywood? Like in this case, the, the Departure was based a little on the, the Infernal Affair. Mm -hmm. I would like to know if you saw the film and uh, what do you think of Hong Kongian film? I, I I saw the Infernal Affairs at, and I, I was uh, I was a big fan of it when I, when I saw it. I think this film it's unfair I think to call. Um, any Martin Scorsese movie a remake because he kind of reinvents whatever he touches as, as a director. The, the skeleton and the structure of the story is certainly the same. A lot of the plot twists are the same, but it's, it's an entire new, entirely new environment, an entirely different set of circumstances, and um, an entire different world that this film is immersed in. I, some people deliberately didn't watch the, the original film just to try to make something original I thought it would be good to watch. I don't know if Scorsese actually watched it himself. You'd have to ask him. I, I don't believe he did, but I know he's a huge fan of, of Hong Kong cinema in, in, in general. And I think, if anything, you know, American films borrow stuff from, from movies like that. I don't know if it's the other way around, necessarily. I think we've been highly influenced in, in Hollywood and in the, in the style of making our films based upon, you know, films from Hong Kong, China, that area. Oh. Asian films in general, I mean, were highly influenced by that. There have been so many remakes in the past. I mean, you go all the way back to, you know, uh, Kurosawa, too, you know. It, we've had a huge Asian f influence in, in our movies. So, uh, Leonardo, from all the things you could have done, why did you choose acting? What happened? That it's the earliest memories I had of, um, you know, I'm very, I'm, I'm lucky because, extremely lucky. Uh, the earliest memories I had as a young man were uh, of wanting to be an actor, wanting to perform, get up on stage and do something, you know. <laughs> um, and I remember specifically even in career day uh, in, in, in high school, making these huge career choices that it would affect the rest of my life. And the, the question arose, well, wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to be an actor professionally? So I 
it was convenient that I lived in Los Angeles. I was able to, I was, I had parents that drove me around or took me out to auditions, and I was, it was really because of the environment that I lived in. Otherwise, if I lived somewhere entirely different, I don't know if I would have been an actor or would have had the same opportunities that I had. But luckily enough, I, it was there in my environment. It was something that I was really passionate about for whatever reason. It's one of those things I can't even really answer or, or explain. And I got <clears throat> lucky enough to be, you know, a professional actor that earns his living doing this. And, um, you know, it's something that I'm certainly not going to squander, an opportunity that I'm not going to squander. And uh, going back to the story, Vera. Vera plays mandolin, which is a very strong point of reference for Billy. Could you talk a little about her and what that she symbolizes within the story for, for Billy? Well, for, for Billy, she certainly symbolizes the only opportunity he has of getting out of this underworld. Um, she represents the future to him. She represents the only person in the entire film that, you know, actually cares about him, his, his true identity. She ends up breaking sort of every rule in the book of, uh, you know, psychiatrists by, by giving me my pain medication and dating me or sleeping with me. But, you know, that's the, that's the interesting part of her character, that she is human after all, and we, ha we do have this connection, and, and possibly another lifetime, maybe these two characters would end up together. Uh, but she certainly, more so than anything, represents a way out and, uh, you know, she, she's, an, she's the optimism of the movie for, for him as he's dealing with this mob syndicate, this gangster underworld where every day he's fearing for his life. She represents something good. And uh, Costello, Jack Nicholson, how was it? Working with Jack Nicholson? Well, you see what ha what's up on screen. He is completely an unpredictable actor. He's a force of nature. You have to walk on set knowing that he's going to do something entirely unexpected every single day, including props that he brings in on set. And you have to be secure enough in your role and your character to react to this man. He's, he, he's a force of nature. He's, he's, he's still doing unbelievable work at this day and age, and he continues to do quality work. And the misconception may be that he's, he doesn't even try, that he's just Jack Nicholson, that he's just that great instinctively. But that's not the case. He still works his ass off, you know. He still is constantly inventing new spontaneous things, either on the spot or beforehand, and doing intense research. And he's like, uh, you know, he's something to aspire to be as far as his work ethic at, at this day and age. It's pretty amazing.